You've got to hand it to classic legends. They really know how to make a striking looking motorcycle. This long, low and gorgeous looking thing is called the Java 42 Bobber and it's the second bike in the company's factory custom lineup after the Perak which has now been out for about 3 years. If the 42 Bobber looks familiar, that's because it is. The entire chassis is the same as the Java Perak and the main difference is that this bike's headlamp, instrument console, fuel tank and switchgear all come from the ESD Roadster. There are a few smaller differences as well, like the repositioned brake lamp which is now placed on the mudguard. It certainly doesn't look as striking as the Perak's unique seat-mounted brake lamp, but the company says that customers can now mount luggage to the rear fender using an accessory luggage rack without blocking out the brake lamp. Finally, there's a bit of polished metal garnish around the slash-cut exhaust pipes and this bike also loses the blacked-out engine finish that you'll see on the Java Perak. With its improved switchgear, USB charging ports and all LED lighting, the 42 Bobber carries a more modern vibe. But if you prefer the retro cool look of the Perak, that bike continues to be on sale as well. Overall though, this really is a sensational looking motorcycle and this along with the Perak are by far the coolest, most unique looking bikes that you can buy at this price point. Because of all these improvements, the 42 Bobber does come across as a higher quality motorcycle than the Perak. Unfortunately, some things have not changed. When we rode the Perak two years ago, we complained that it lost this bolt that holds the fender stay in place. This time around, the 42 Bobber has lost two bolts down here and the entire stay came loose. We've just put a makeshift bolt in there to hold it for the shoot. Honestly, this sort of stuff just shouldn't be happening. This issue is something we've seen on a number of classic legends bikes over the years. And while the build quality on these motorcycles certainly needs to improve, the company has addressed one of the Perak's biggest problems, its seating position. With that bike, the combination of a low seat and high foot pegs made the riding position very uncomfortable, especially for dollar riders. This time, the 42 Bobber gets a new seat and the company has moved the foot pegs forward by about 6 inches, which has helped matters considerably. This new seat is definitely more comfortable and supportive and these forward set foot pegs have really opened up the riding position. It's definitely not as cramped as it used to be. This wide handlebar is new but you still have a bit of a reach forward to go and get it. And I think a further back handlebar somewhere here would have made this a more comfortable riding position. Overall, with such a short seat though, this riding position is definitely better suited to shorter riders. Another area where the company says that they've tried to improve things is in the suspension. Classic legends say that they've retuned the front and rear ends to improve comfort. The result is that the rear shock now feels a little more forgiving and it is a little more comfortable when there are no bumps in the road. However, that rear shock is still quite limited in its travel and this motorcycle can pick up small bumps that most other motorcycles just won't notice. In fact, at high speed you really have to keep a sharp eye out because that shock can really send a kick up your back over bumps potholes and expansion gaps. It's a similar story with the handling and just like the Perak, the 42 Bobber feels like a long motorcycle thanks to its stretched out wheelbase. But the weight is easily managed and it doesn't take much effort to steer the motorcycle. In the corners, the old Perak always had an issue with lean angle clearance and with its forward set foot pegs, the 42 Bobber now scrapes even more easily, so high speed cornering isn't a strong point on this motorcycle. The brakes also perform well with dual channel ABS keeping things safe, but the initial bite is very dull and you have to use quite a bit of strength to slow the bike down in a hurry. Clearly this is a motorcycle that doesn't appreciate being ridden in an aggressive, fast fashion and the engine reflects that. Flat out performance is good, but the engine does feel harsh at high RPMs and you'd be better off surfing the strong mid-range. Now since this motor gets some of the improvements that came out in the SDs, including a slip assist clutch, the overall refinement is better than the Perak, but it's still nowhere close to as refined as the other bikes in the 350cc retro category. But on the other hand, it does have much stronger performance than what those bikes can offer. With a starting price of 2.06 lakh egg showroom, the 42 Bobber is priced a little lower than the Perak. Although this dual tone colour scheme you see here 
will cost you the same 2.09 lakh rupees. If your sole aim is to look good on a motorcycle, then this bike will do the job outstandingly well. However, there is no escaping the fact that this bike doesn't really excel at much else. And at the end of the day, it's a very uh, single-minded machine. Clearly then, the 42 Bobber comes across as a more modern and slightly improved version over the Perak. But it offers the same riding experience and it comes with the same compromises of comfort, ability and practicality. Ultimately, this is a better value for money option than the Perak. But like the Perak, this is a motorcycle that you buy for one reason and one reason only.